you very much to the musicians. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Um, let us read two portions of the scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 11. And I would like to title the subject for this evening, The Royal Family. And um, the, the, the verse that I'm reading, I would like to take to believe what the Bible says. It, it seems to be a little bit spectacular for us. It's not ecclesiastical thinking, but this is what the Bible says, you know. Chapter 2, verse 11. For both, I'm speaking about you and me, he that sanctifies, that's Christ, and they who are sanctified, that's us, are all of one. Having the same father, coming from the same source. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brothers. That means a lot. That means a lot. And let us read in the book of Esther. Esther chapter 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 5. And by my accent, you understand it. You have to take what I want to say and not what I'm saying. Huh? Okay? Verse 5. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the cap cap captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither, neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, who Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. He may be seated. Now, I'm very, very thankful to be here, and I thank Brother Paul, my good friend, my great example, to grant me to speak to you. My name is Markus Becker. I come from Germany. My pastor is, pastor is Brother Rodewald. Uh, he sends his greetings uh, to all of you, especially to our most noble brother. I'm here right in the U.S. for some days, for two weeks, and um, yeah, I had a reason to come by. I told Brother Paul we knew us for many, many years, and we lost a little bit track. And um, if I could say a, a great compliment, I remember that uh, him to be a good preacher, I was his interpreter, um, blessed services, but preaching is a gift, but character is something different, you know. I remember when we were watching a little bit what's going on at BCF, you know, when our brother Jeff resigned, and there was some kind like a vacuum, and um, brother, brother Paul entered in to preach there, and I was impressed. I was very, very impressed. You know, not many people will do this, you know, to step into something there where you can lose nothing, where you can gain nothing but lose everything, because people surely will misunderstand that, you know. And I would say that that, that, imp that impressed me. And uh, I always said when, whenever I would meet him, I would let him know that that changed, that, that formed my life in a certain way, you know, to have that kind of a character. And uh, I was really blessed by that. I mean, I'm, I'm really honored to say this, to be part of the family. Look, if, if somebody is young and he is new, he makes a lot of mistakes. We have to live by it. But he needs somebody who's standing in the gap. Because we have a message mentality whenever when somebody makes a big mistake, we try to, to, to be distant, to, take, take, to, 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 let me say, to, not to unchristian, but then put him out of a brotherhood. I always call it the message Cold War, you know, the Cold War. Then we have our, Demarca you know, we have the East and the West, and we ignore and we isolate and we put in the circle and we put out of the circle. And this is not a very much of a mature attitude. But young people need, they need somebody standing the gap, taking the shame. Amen. Because, because and, and that, I've seen this in Brother Paul, and I thought, really, Brother Paul, that, that uh, how you could say it, that um, it, it, it blessed my life, and it, it, it changed my vision. You know? A couple of weeks ago, I was in Peru, and there was a church, big split, because the pastor passed away, and a lot of hard feelings, and things People say foolish things out of wrong emotions. 
Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that many things that we said over all these years are under the blood. Because it was not always the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Sometimes it was our frustration speaking to us. And, and if everybody takes, uh, let me say, takes these things, uh, let me say, serious and makes a story, and he said, and he said, I mean, we are right, but the question today is not is, uh, who is right. The question is we have people. We have young people, they're watching us. We have families, we have children. They, they want to see the, the, the character behind our preaching. So when I went there, I knew, I, and, and they asked several ministers, and they refused to go because this is a situation where you can only lose, you know. Uh, but I told them, I said, I will come because I have nothing to lose anyhow. <laughs> so, so I was, and I, when I went there, I had to think twice, but I thought about Brother Paul. I said, we have to do, sometimes you have to stand in the gap. If people understand or do not understand, no matter, we are brothers, we are friends, and so I could be of a help, and so God bless the influence. That is what I was searching. Brother Brian speaks about Uzziah, and he said, on the other side of eternity, I will tell him, Uzziah, you influenced my life. <laughs> exactly so. And Brother Paul, I want to say, you influenced my life in a very good way. So God bless our noble brother. I'm a gallant man of God. Amen. Absolutely so, and so I'm very happy. I always try to, when I, I always thought by myself, if I see him next time, I will let him know, you know, really. God bless you, so uh, I know it's the Wednesday. Let me go directly into the word of the Lord. I left all the greetings and all these things. I'm really blessed. The, the royal family, and let me be myself, okay? I'm traveling a lot around, so I learned how to respect people. I learned how to respect cultures. Um... The more, you, the more older you get, the more you learn to respect people, their mentality, their background. Sometimes when we first traveled, we traveled as Germans. <laughs> and uh, Germany is a many germs, therefore, you know, there's a, a lot of problem. You're in trouble already when you arrive. Huh? But, uh, but uh, we learned really to understand cultures and let people stand the way they are. We cannot Germanize everybody. Yeah? We want to germatize them with the word of the Lord, but not germanize them. Huh? So, 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 I hope I can say, I can start with a sentence, uh, not offending you, but the message that we believe does not come from America. It comes from the presence of our, our Father. Amen. Amen. It does not come from Jeffersonville, no. It is not Brother Branham's message. Brother Branham was the voice. The voice, and, and what we listen is the voice behind the voice. The message of the hour is not a doctrine. The message of the hour is our Father talking to us. Um, when we gave our heart to the Lord, our, our attribute, God laid, laid part of himself into our lives. And, and, and it is written in Psalm, it was said, he even laid eternity into our hearts. There's only one who is eternal, that's God himself. So when we answered to the altar call, it was not our brain. Our brain was not fast enough. It was the attribute answering to that call. So, 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 so and then Brother Ram said, this Bible became a new Bible. It's not that we, should, that we should throw the Bible away. Because the prophet said, the Bible is the book of the year. He said, it will always be the book of the year till the end. So, so but it's a new Bible. And we understand that's our story. That's our book. That's our identification. And, and here we have that little girl by the name of Esther. By the way, I want to greet the family of Brother Paul, the boys that I met over there in Brother Ron Peterson. So, very good memories still. So Esther, uh, the, the story starts with um, a king who had a, had a wife who was not very much obedient. And the king, the princes around the king, he gave him a principle. He said, look, if your wife is not obedient to your command, all of our wives will do whatever they want. They understood that we are examples. Do we understand that we are an example for our children, for the people? They watch us, they observe us. And we have a young generation, especially preachers, kids, they, they can detect. Uh, they can even see body languages. They can detect tensions. You try to, 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 uh, to, to, to smile and to smile things away, but they can detect already some vibes. So it's so important that, that we, for all problems that we have, that we find solutions. If not, it is a powerless church. 
They have just a doctrine or some pictures of Brother Brandon, but we need solutions to go on, you know. So, so we see that, that this little girl, Esther, her life story starts with two names. One is Esther, which means star. The other one is Hadassah. Some translations say bright, other translations say myrrh. And you have to understand that we have two names. Amen. On one hand side, you are just an American. On the other hand side, on the inner man, you come from God. Brother, royal family is a privilege. Nobody can preach you in. And nobody can preach you out of it. No, sir. Amen. Therefore, this message that we believe is not a cult. In a cult, uh, as long as you're a good brother, people come to you and say, oh, it's our brother from before, the, before the foundation of the world, and we were eagle. And somehow you left, and from that moment, and the same people would say, okay, he left us because he was never part of us. So you come back and you repent, oh, our brother from eternity, we know us already. And we say, okay, uh, who, who wants to believe this? If somebody is a brother, he's a brother. He's, even if he's in spiritual amnesia, but if he's a brother, he's a brother. I mean, if somebody's an eagle, he's an eagle. Sometimes he forgets what he is, but he still is what he is. Amen. Therefore, this message is not a cult. Amen. And, 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 and you are just a simple man uh, over there in the U.S. I'm just a simple brother from, from Germany. I tell you one thing. I'm a very, very sympathetic man, if you only would knew my, me. Because I, 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 this is now Marcus, this is my vision. Brother Bram speaks about the tent vision. And people say, where is the tent? Is it in uh, Costa Rica? Is it in Germany? Is it in the US? I said, maybe this is my own interpretation of it. Then you don't have to accept it. But I believe the bride is the tent. Because, because we live in a tent. If this earthly tabernacle will, and that tabernacle is nothing else than a tent. If this earthly tabernacle will be dissolved, we have a building from God which is eternal. And then Paul continues in Romans. He said, we're now living in a tent, in a tabernacle. Remember the vision that, that, that Moses, who was the first one having a tent vision? That was Moses. Going up, and when he came down, he built up the tabernacle according to the vision that he saw. And it was Brother Brandon revealing that his body, soul, and spirit. And Brother Ben even said the curtain between the holies of holies in, the, and, 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 and that place is our self-will. The, 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 the temple in Jerusalem is a shadow on a human being. Amen. And we're living in it. This is now Marcus. We live in it for 70, 80 years. And then we go to our real destiny, you know, our true body. Therefore, I said I'm a very, very sympathetic man, but I'm just living in a German tent. For 70, 80 years, standing in my own way, having my complexes, having my genes, having, having my story, having my childhood. But in, the, in me, there is something of God. Amen. And in you, exactly the same thing. So, so that question of our Esther who comes into view, she is, she, she, she is a, she is a, she ha, does not have a father and doesn't have a mother. She is part of the Jewish group taken away in captivity. captivity. So our great king Ahasuerus, he is king over 127 countries. Now he wants to marry again, and we are not preaching this evening about marriage and divorce. No centimeter. Okay, I wouldn't dare to do it behind another pulpit. But we speak about a spiritual ap application, nothing else. Okay, please don't misinterpreted. So he's searching now for a new wife, a girl that he can marry. And she is that woman, is a nice girl, but she has a special qualifications. The Bible makes it very sure. She has no father and she has no mother. Now that reminds us to Melchizedek. Amen. We had no father and we had no mother. Remember, he who sanctifies and he who's, who is sanctified comes of one. It's the same family. So, so let us see a little bit her background. And I would ask uh, the brothers and sisters to, to, uh, to, to just, 
I'm a German, but when it comes to technique, I get a little bit nervous. Can you just put some of the slides? Yeah. And I will tell it in, in some kind of like a story, because this is now the time of the Roman Empire. We are in the fourth century, and we have uh, an eastern part and a western part. Uh, this is now 300, around 320 after Christ. In the Roman Empire, we have different Caesars, emperors. Now, in human nature, many, if somebody is a human leader, he cannot see somebody besides him. Okay? So, there, we cannot have two Caesars. Uh, we cannot have two emperors. So, on one day, we have our most noble friend by the name of Constantine, who decided now go into war with the other Caesar to find out if we are two, is one too much, okay? This is Tombstone. This is Billy the Kid against, against the Daltons. So, <laughs> this saloon only needs one. Okay, this is human nature. Brother Bram said, if you have a gift, watch what you will do with the gift. Will you help your brothers? Or will you pull them down? Will, will you make a name for, them, for yourself like, like Nimrod? Or will you help your brothers to come into their position? Huh? But human nature, brother, I tell you, is, is selfish nature. Amen. Can you go, please go back again, brother? So we see that now war starts. And uh, what happens is God is in control because he wanted to propagate Christianity over the Roman Empire at that time. It is God's plan. What happens is that right before the night or the day, there's different legions about it, we see that Constantine, he sees a light over the sun, and a cross. And he hears these noble words, in hic, in hoc signo vinces. That means you will win with this sign. Hmm. So he believes in a God that he, that he doesn't know, and his group will have now a sign of a cross on their shields. And he's fighting on the Milevian bridge in Rome against Marxensius. And Constantine wins the, wins the battle. And from now on, Constantine, he is the leader over the whole Roman Empire. That question is settled. At the same time, we have different opinions in the church. Great opinions, because we have different schools of churches in the eastern part and in the western part. The question is this, is Jesus created or is he part of God? Hmm? That is not a problem for them as long as there are two different emperors, but now it becomes into one state and this question has to be solved. In other, uh, uh, that means, uh, let me read it like this, one purpose of the, that is Wikipedia, one purpose of the council was to resolve disagreements arising from within the Church of Alexandria over the nature of Jesus in his relationship to the Father, in particular whether the Son had been begotten by the Father from his own being and therefore having no beginning or else created out of nothing or therefore having a beginning. So we have two big schools and they are one against the other. One is Arias, one is... okay. The question is clear. Constantine was an unbeliever. He wants to make deals. I mean, tremendous. Something like this. Unbelievable. I mean, he wants to make deals. And Marxensius, he's a loser. He's, I mean, it's a disaster, total disaster, you know. Something like this. So what happens, he makes a deal because he understands the God that I don't know is very, very strong because I saw the vision, but I don't understand the doctrine. So we now have to make this as a state religion. 
But you cannot have a state religion if the religious leaders don't understand their own doctrine. You understand? So he brought them together on the council of Nicaea to say, look, brother, I'm not interested in the solution because I'm not believing anyhow. But when we come out of this, we have one doctrine, okay? It's true. Because he wanted to make a deal. He now wants to make this God, they call it Christian, Christian, Christianos, Christians, but I cannot make it state religion when they don't know their own doctrine. So first we come together, you make, a, you make a deal, you make an agreement, no matter what, I believe everything because he was a believer, any, he wasn't a believer anyhow. And they found out that they believed in Jesus to be part of God, not just somebody who was created like an angel, but part of God. This was the birth of the Trinity idea. Now, I will not go into it, sir, it's not my place on a Wednesday because I like to, like to tell a story about Esther, but Brother Ren makes sure Jesus was completely God and completely man. That, that's what he says. But it is an important question. They call it the question of being homo, 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 homoousios, of one substance. So there is a big difference between something which is created and something which is burst. Now, if I'm creating something, I'm building something up. But if I'm birthing something, that means part of me is in that. I created many things, but I birthed only one daughter. And the difference between the things I created and the birth, part of me is in my daughter, my own genes. She is not just created, she's, she's begotten. Part of me is in her. That's the difference between a birth and just a membership. It's a big difference. Once you're birthed, part of God is in you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we see this, and please make the next one. It was an essential question of that time, and Brother Branham says, and that is what Constantine and his successors did at Nicaea and after Nicaea. They invented the people of God to the convention, and when the church sat down and eat and rose up to play, partaking of church from ceremonies, pagan feasts, named after Christian rites, she was trapped, she had a committed fornication, and God walked out. Brother Bram said the true believers should not have gone there. And he, he, he parallels it with, with, with the Moabites. They said we are all one, but brother, we are not all one. We are not all one. We are, uh, this message was not based on William Branham. This message is, was based on the pillar of fire. That's a difference, okay? So we see it was a very important question, and now the question is now, where is the bride in it? And let's have, let's see it, Brother Bram, for the next one. Okay. So here's what Brother Bram said. So he first was God Jehovah, and out of him, let's just picture now as a little drama so you can get us, let's see come out of space, there was nothing. Let's make a little white light, like a mystic light, like a halo. And that was the Logos that went out of God in the beginning. That was the Son of God that came out of the bosom of the Father. That was what was in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was God, and then out of God came the Logos, a part of God that went out of God. You remember that Brother Bram said, the first thing that I see is uh, a little white light. And he calls it like a child playing in the, in, in, in the garden. But then Brother Bram said this, and I was puzzled over it. He said, the first thing that God created was angels. Another quote. How to bring it together. Sure. He created angels. Creation. But that Logos was not created. It came out of him. Do you understand that we don't have two gods? It's one person. Amen. Because that Logos came out of him. It was not created like the angels. It was part of him. Now we learned through the message of the hour, and here you see the royal family. And remember, this is what just one service. Please know there's much more to say. And I don't know if I have all the balance in it, but that's not the question for this evening. But 
Brother Ben taught us the bride was in Christ even on Calvary. As Eve was in Adam. In what form ever, but she's part of him. We were reading it in, 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 in Hebrew. But if the bride was in Christ and Christ was Melchizedek before, then the bride must have been in him too. I don't speak about the church, the bride. I mean, part Eve, part of Adam. They call it the family of God. So if the bride was in Melchizedek, I mean, in some form, in his thoughts, whatever, be sure she must have been in the Logos. Because Melchizedek came out of that Logos. Amen. So if she was in that Logos, she must have been in God. Nobody can preach you into it. Therefore, Brother Bram said, if you have eternal life, you always have it. But there will be people that will get eternal life. That's true. They will be safe, not even at the white throne judgment. But here we speak about a family, a royal family. That's different. I'm a royal family. So, so in whatever form, I cannot tell you. But here is a picture. Amen. Next one, please. Here's what Brother Bram said. The eternal thoughts of God, let me ask you, are the thoughts of God eternal? If you can see this, you will see many things. God is unchangeable, both essence and behavior. We have studied that and proven that already. God is infinite in his abilities, so therefore he is God, must be omniscient. If he is omniscient, then he is not now learning, nor is he taking counsel even with himself, nor is he at any time adding to his knowledge. If he can add to his knowledge, then he's not omniscient. The best way we could say is that sometime he will be, but this is not spirit, scriptural. He is omniscient. He has never had a new thought about anything because all his thoughts he has always had and always will have and knows the end from the beginning because he's God. And now, now you're coming in. Thus the thoughts of God are eternal. They are real. And here's the difference between our thoughts. Our thoughts, we think about things. But his thoughts is substance. They are real. They are not simply like a man with a blueprint. He has drawn up which one day will be translated into substance and form, but they are already real and eternal and part of God. So when we say we were in the mind of God, it was not just God was just thinking about us. We were part of him, part of his being. Blessed be. I don't know who else was in that thought, but we're just speaking about the bride to understand Esther. She had no father and she had no mother. Hallelujah. Bless, blessed be the long. So one thing is sure, and I I'm always like to make that little demonstration that, that Brother Beckett was making some years ago. This is just a demonstration. It's not a doctrine. Just a demonstration to make things tangible. Now God, before the foundation, he made a picture of his family. And here we were. Therefore, we are not arrogant, but we are proud of our Father. Amen. We are proud who we are. Not arrogant, but proud who we are. Amen. So God took our souls and throwed it in seven church ages on seven countries. Some in America, some in Germany, some in Lutherstein, some in Wesley, some in Paul, some, some in our time. And God knows one thing, my sheep will hear my voice. I, will, I place the receiver in their hearts. Amen. And, and God knows one thing. When time is over, the whole fa the, the family will be back together. And Brother Branham explains it. Brother Branham said this. And, and, the, and the prophet was the first one who said, in the, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, the mystery of God. Not mysteries. Schofield already revealed mysteries, but there were big mysteries. I mean, the mystery. Brother Branham was the first man ever on this earth who said, without you, God is not complete anymore. Amen. Yet we were in his mind. We could not have fellowship. We should have been expressed, but we were already part of him. 
as my daughter was always in me. She was not created. She needed her time to be expressed. So we wanted to come directly in our, in our theophany. Amen. And we landed in Ohio. Amen. And we came into families. God never asked us, do you want to be, uh, do you want to be male or female? Do you want to be American or German? Amen. God never asked us, do you want to be uh, black or white? Sometimes we came into families that we were not choosing. Um, I came from a family where, which was divorced. And I hated myself and that situation. But God, there's a quote that Brother Bram said. He said, God planned our birth for many generations. God did not only knew that we were, that we were coming. He planned our coming. So in Second World War, all these Hitler boys could not kill your father or your grandfather. Because you must have been expressed. So you could just send them right into the Siegfried line. All these Hitler boys come. But God had to protect your father because he knew you had to come. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. And if God planned my birth, surely God planned my death. Therefore, he came to Marilyn Monroe and said, there's a young girl. She will die at this and this minute. God knows the minute when we will die. When we are born, God knows already this is the end of his life. What, what, what a thing how we are in the hands of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? That's very special. Nobody can preach you into the family. And nobody can preach you out. When we were younger, we would like to bring, we give people, if we have problems with people, we like to, to, to give them over to Satan. Because we did not have any remedy. We didn't have a solution. So it was easy to just un unchristianize them. It was the most easy way for unmatured people to, to just say, this is not a real brother. So because <laughs> today we learned we have to give them into God's hands. He said, Heavenly Father, my, my, my brother is as, lo as wrong as he can be. But I believe it's my brother. So, so you had a lot of patience with me. Lord, have patience with my brother. Amen. amen. Can you say Amen. So, so when I, in, in South America, something they are very, they are much, ma, much more of guerreros, uh, uh, fighters. So one comes to the other, and he says, now, now, I will send you over to hell. I said, if he comes next time, you said, you cannot send me to hell because you didn't pay my price. Right. Amen. You didn't pay my price. You will send me nowhere. I'm, I have a father. Amen. Can you say amen? Yes. Next one, please. Amen. Sure. Amen. So therefore... We, we, we came on this earth and we came into a body that we didn't like. I mean, when we were teenagers, we hated ourselves. I mean, you remember the freckles? I still remember that they're preaching about the freckles. I hated my freckles. My, I see now my daughter hates the freckles. I learned from you, Brother Paul. I tell you, honey, you will get a husband who loves your freckles one day. <laughs> exactly so. But we hated us. I mean, do you know one thing, brother? Most of our problems, we're staying in our own way. And, and Brother Bram himself, he says, I'm a melancholic. And, and even in the message, uh, on the wings of a snow white dove, I mean that it's 1965, he said, all my life I was a neurotic. So we thought as Pentecostals, the Holy Ghost come and everything is solved. It's not. It's not, because we still have our, our, our human nature. But we have enough grace and enough power to bring that human nature under his control. But it's there. It's there. Brother Bram said, I'm a not. And, and here he is, 1963. He, Brother Bram received the Holy Ghost. It was not a question of the new birth. That, that is where we out made our mistakes. We, we, we come in the flesh and then we ask ourselves if we were born again. So another prayer line. Another prayer line. Another laying on of hands. I said, brother, you can go so much in prayer lines that at the end you don't know if you are saved or not. More prayer lines and more doubts come. I mean, I mean, you have to make a start, but from there you have to grow. And you have to understand, you have still that nature. It's a process. A person says, yeah, that prayer line was great. I'm, I, I do prayer lines myself, that's fine. But the main thing is, is, is a process. People sometimes think a minister comes like Santa Claus. And, and, and preachers things it cannot be because growth comes by God. Show me the prayer line for rapturing faith. It will not be. Rapturing faith is in the word. 
So if this answer is in the Word, all my answers are in the Word. If young people need a prayer line, let's go on. But don't make it make, make a tradition of if I, if I wasn't at the altar, it wasn't spiritual. No, take take your blessing, yeah. wherever you are. Yeah. Bless, blessed be the name on here of the prophet. Look, 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 and he comes in the flesh and he says, "I build up a complex," because he listened to people. Brother, there's two things for a minister that is difficult, and if the younger you are, the more you are affected to it. The first thing is eat perpetual critics because this discourages you. But the other thing is perpetual applause. We need a balance in both things. We need, a, but we need the critics and we need the applause. But everything which is out of balance brings us out of balance. Can you say amen? I, I, <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord. So, so he, here he comes. He listens to, to these voices. Now, I always tell the young people, I said, you are Wednesday, for example, and we don't feel well. We have a little cough, like, <laughs> and then we hear a voice. No, today you cannot go to church. No, no, no but you, you, you will bring a pandemia over the whole church. No, you have to stay. <laughs> have you ever heard that voice? You, can you say amen? So in other words, that voice speaks German and English. Because I hear it in German, you hear it in English. And, and I always say this, if Satan tells you not to come to church, you tell him, no, you stay at home. Amen. Amen. You say, no, you stay at home. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. But we come into the flesh. And once you, once you come into the flesh, don't doubt your salvation. Don't, don't doubt your family. But come back and know the potential lays in me. And let God again touch that eternal part in you, and you're coming back on track. So whenever God came and, and the prophet had his wings moved, a, 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 a swing moods, okay, he was a melancholic. So God always brought him up on a higher level. Amen. Amen. Here he comes in another dimension. Will it help you to see the other dimension? Yes. Amen. Amen. Here he has, again, he is down, and somebody comes in Clifton Cafeterias. He said, because thou hast chosen. Brother Branham said, I'm, I'm never the same William Branham again. And two years later, he preaches the present stage of my ministry. He's completely depressed. That's how it goes. Sometimes we forget who we are. And then God comes and reminds us who we are. Brother, I'm, I'm dealing sometimes with people with, with, with some kind like, like, like uh, health, uh, mental health issues. And, and it will occur more and more in our church because this is a very difficult time to live. And one of the sisters, she gave me a great compliment. She said, Brother Marcus, one thing is, is so. My psyche is not my faith. My faith is here. My psyche is here. Um, if you're in menopause, your psyche is upside down, but your faith always holds. You don't feel it, but God doesn't go after feeling. God goes after his, his eternal plan. Can you say amen? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, 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 so God says to Brother Ben, look to the right. This is your life. I ask you the question. When did these mountains appear? 1963? <laughs> when God created the earth, he made already that ridge of mountains. Knowing that in millions of years, I have a seventh angel. He will be a melancholic. So we are, he, he was already portraying his life right when he created the earth. Don't you think that God knows about everything about us? And we, we start in our prayer land, um, uh, Heavenly Father, you know and you know, and God says, I know. Amen. You know, you know, you know my life, and you know, and, and God says, I know. Amen. So, so, so he was building up. He was showing the end from the beginning. I always say this. Now, the voice says to Brother Branham, this is your life. And I want to tell to you, this is your life. So, brother, if you are on the, on the mountaintop, don't become arrogant. Oh, if I see this family and their children, I, I, oh, they should only believe. They should only believe. And God says, okay, I will bring the same thing to you. And, and then the, if you're on the mountaintop, never forget that the next valley will come. There's no reason to be arrogant because we are now have now a good time. But one thing is sure, if you're in the valley, don't give up. If you're in the valley, never give up. 
Because one thing is sure, the next mountaintop comes. Can you say amen? But it doesn't come by nice Bible slogans. It comes by an understanding from where we come from. We come from the mind of God. And nobody will stop us. Even we will not stop ourselves. We will pay for our nonsense. But it will not throw us out of the family of God. I talk about the bride. Okay? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. So, so, therefore, the, the, the voice says to Brother Bram, he, God understands people. God understands human beings. And I, I, I repeated what I'm doing from time to time. A young boy, he wanted to, to buy some dogs, okay? And he goes and he sees one handicapped dog. And the owner of the dog, he comes down the staircase. And he says, why do you want to have that dog? I mean, he's handicapped. He cannot walk like the rest. He cannot. And the boy is putting up his trousers. And from his knee down, he has a prothesis, an artificial leg. And the boy says this, I want to have this dog. Because when we go out, I understand him. And he understands me. And Brother Brandon, quote Brother Brandon, God became man to understand man. Yes. Quote Brother Brandon, but God became teenager to understand teenagers. Yes. That's our father. So when you pray, even you, 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 you pray about immoral thoughts, God knows what you talk about. It. I mean, he understands that we are human beings. Can you say amen? That makes our message so symp sympathetic. That makes the gospel the good news. Amen. That brings relationship. This message is not a doctrine. This message is a relationship to our Father. Because we come from the same family. But we did not know who we were until we heard a voice. We came to the Lord and we were just, uh, uh, somebody brought us under conviction. And you are this, and you are this, and you are this, and Christ died for me, yes. And we have to start like this, but you cannot live your whole Christian life under convictions. Once you must find out, I'm a son of God. I was trapped into the things of this world. But the judge is my attorney. Can you say amen? And brother, I tell you this. If somebody believes this from all his heart, he will not become a worldly person. No, he will not. He will do everything to serve the Lord. Because he understands who he is. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Make the next one. Amen. This is the last one before. Yes. This is a nice, again, therefore I, sh I, I showed it to you in the Bible, in, in, in the message of the hour. We do not live by slogans. Have you, have you ever heard when the young people that come, oh, Brother Marcus, we were in a convention. I, I tell you, brother, that was deep. And we never heard it that way. I always say, yeah, yeah, you never heard it that way because the prophet never said it that way. Amen. Therefore, you never heard it that way, okay? Uh, but Brother Marcus, that, that, was, that was, how do you say, tremendous. It was unbelievable. Fine. Then I said to the young person, what did you get? What did you understand? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. If nothing, I mean, where, what is tremendous about nothing? Amen. Then I, then I say to him, total disaster. Amen. Because you must, we are not here to impress people. We are here to help people. To find their position in Christ. To find a relationship. I don't understand all the doctrine of William Brennan, but I have a father. Amen. What is your doctrine? I have a father. He calls me his own. Long before even time began. Do we believe that? My life was in his hands. So you see, Brother Paul, you're not the only one who can sing, huh? <laughs> So look, this is a picture of, of, this is an unbeliever. This is just, uh, how do you call it, uh, a, 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 a filmer of, of animals. I think it's on YouTube or whatever, but a, a, a boy gave it to me. This is an eagle and a crow, National Geographic, some of these filmers, National Geographic. So it's the, the eagle. Uh, he had a crow sitting on his back, and that crow was attacking the eagle right on the neck. And this is the, the report of the unbeliever. He knows nothing about the message and eagles and so forth. And he said this. The eagle, when he recognized there's an enemy right on his back, he did nothing. And the crow was just picking on the head. 
But at a certain moment, the eagle just started to rise. It goes up and up and up and up. And the eagle knows one thing. Hey, friend, you better go or you explode. You see? He, he, does, he does not fight the enemy. He just goes up in another dimension. Can you say amen? And he said, okay, sports friends. Okay, you can try, but uh, are you still there? <laughs> Brother, we have something. This message gives us a vision. This message is not law and order. This message comes from our Father. This message shows who we are really. This message makes, makes us to stand up. Hallelujah. I always love that picture. Sometimes sometime we are boxers and we, and we get it. And then, and then you say, and then we boom. One, two, three, four, five, and we're just... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we're coming back. Brother, to fall is human. To stand up is godly. You will find out if you're family of God, there's something in you that stands up. It is no, not your capacity, it's God in you standing up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Once you find out who you are, you can have patience with others. You can even have patience with unbelievers because you say, if God doesn't reveal, what can the person do about that? We understand we live by God's grace. And we understand even growth is God's grace. So we, can, we understand we have to have patience with the family of God because God has much patience with us. Um, we're not judgmental anymore. It's not that we don't call sin, sin. That's fine. But, but we are not uh, judgmental about brothers, sisters. We just say, Lord, have a way for them. So that is the background for our sister Esther. Thank you very much for the technicians. So what happens is this. And I'm finishing by the, by the little drama. So we cannot read the Bible in a, Western, in a Western understanding. But this king, he was inviting all these girls for one night into his room. What happened was clear. They played cards. Okay? Exactly so. So this was for the, for, the, for, the, for the teenagers and for the, okay? Right. So when the night was over of playing memory, he was just sending the girl away. And he was just asking her if he wants to play memory again. So he had a full, a full house of girls. And Esther, she was made ready and she came under the care of a great servant. It is always a main servant introducing the bride to the bridegroom. Hallelujah. Remember the story of Ruth and Boaz came. Who is that girl? It was the servant explaining who the girl is. Remember Eliezer presenting the bride to Isaac. It's always a, it's always a servant presenting the bridegroom to the bride. And she came under the care of the main servant. And she asked nothing. Now, one thing that was clear, all these girls knew one thing, that king, he will marry one of us, our girls, one of us girls. So they tried to make an individual feature, uh, special earrings, special this, special, so that the king will remind them so that they might become the bride. But Esther did not ask for nothing. Only what Haggai told her. Now, Esther was a wise girl because she understood one thing. If somebody knows the taste of the king, then it's Hagar. And we have to understand that brother, there was nobody living as close to the king as our prophet. Can you say amen? None of the prophets could live, could see as, as far as William Branham. Moses could just see in the beginning. John could say, in the beginning was, but this prophet brought us before the beginning. A little white light comes out of him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That means he, he knew, Hagar knew the taste. Amen. Amen. And Brother Branham knew the taste of Christ for our age. So it's good to take him as an example. And whatever. You honor God by many things. 
I remember, I know this is Wednesday, but just, just let me, let me, let me, but by many things we honor God. So many things how Brother Branham handled things, especially in the church. Look how he went when he goes to hunt. Look how he goes to church. It was, an, it was a reflection of he felt that, would, that it would be pleasing unto God. So I can take him as an example without idolizing the man. But what happened is that she was under his care. And the Bible says this. Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his royal in the 10th month, which is the month Tibet, in the seventh year of the reign. So Esther came into the palace of the king on the 10th month of the seventh year. Here we have our prophet. Amen. Remember, remember one thing. There were three magicians or three astronomers and they saw the star and they were just leading, following the star. And that star led them to the king. So the three astronomers didn't say, oh, that's tremendous. Three stars in one line. Let's make a picture. Let's make, let's make a doctrine of three stars in one line. And we are the leaders of that new movement, the three-star line movement. Exactly. We become the high priest of that whole. I mean, that, that star led them to a person, to the king. And, 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 they, and they had every evening, they had church service. That's Marcus, okay? They had family altar. And they, had a, they, had, they were preaching to one another. But they had nothing to say. The only thing that they were preaching was, we have seen the star. Can you, can you say amen? Amen, blessed be the name of the Lord. They had no doctrine, but they have seen the star. And look, and we have seen the star. The seventh star. We have seen the star. But this star did not lead us to Branham Tabernacle, but led us to the king. To the person. Can you say amen? He did not lead us to himself. It led us to the king. Therefore, I'm in Sunset Mountain. Brother Bram said, the sun is the king of all lights. He says, shalom, good morning, church. The night is over, shalom. Amen. Who appeared? The king, the light. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we are not Branhamites. We're not Branhamites, no. But we are Christians. But we understand the Bible. So what happened is this, is on the 10th month of the seventh year, she now came to the king, was presented to the king. Amen. So, all these girls wanted to impress the king by uh, something outstanding. I just give this as an example because I'm liking, I'm, I like singing. Though Brother Bram said only those who are gifted should sing, so I, find my, I, 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 I found my limitation about it. As an example, a person say, uh, I, I, I'm impressing God because I can sing. Then you see Jimmy Swaggart. Jesus. Sing it again, brothers. And it's wonderful if you can sing, but God has angels who can sing better than us. Somebody says, I'm, I, you know, I know the message. And I have a lot of wisdom, that's wonderful, but God is the source of all wisdom. Who wants to impress God? Amen. We only impress him in this loudy scene age with humble hearts serving the Lord. And if we sing or preach or whatever, we do it for the glory of God. Amen. But we cannot impress God with our human abilities. We cannot mix them together, but doing everything for its purpose. And now here comes that little, little, little girl. And Brother Bram said this, she was not adorned with nothing. Because they thought the king is just looking for female attraction. You understand what I want to say. But she th knew that king has character. And Brother Bram said this, the story of Esther, Jesus never mentioned it in the Bible. Paul never mentions the story of Esther. Amen. Martin Luther said we should throw the book of Esther into the river. He, he, he really thought it's not part of the Bible. And Martin Luther was asked the question, why is the book of Esther not mentioned in the Bible? Or why does it belong to the Bible? He said, first, it's too Jewish. Second, it's a feminist book. 
Third, the name of Jehovah is not even mentioned in the whole book of Esther. So it has no place. But here comes the seventh angel taking that whole story for after 2,000 years and preaches the marriage of the Lamb. Making sense to the story of Esther because we are that Esther. And then Brother Bram said this. He said, when Esther came into the presence of that king, he said, she was just adorned with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. Not with knowledge about the seventh seal. This is part of the Holy Spirit. Very important part. But that's not all. Because you can have a very nice understanding and an arrogant spirit. You can have a very modest appeal, but a very bad character behind the modest appeal. A person said, we are better than others because, you know, and we have longer this. But the, the Muslims have longer hair than us. That's not what is important. That's part of the gospel, but that's not the center of the whole thing. The center is a heart. It's a character. It's a love. Blessed be the name. So when he came, and remember, that king was king over 127 countries. Esther had nothing to bring. She was just a girl without father and her mother. But when she came in, and, and Brother Brandon makes a drama, he said, when she came in, the king was so impressed. The only ador adoration that she had, or, 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 or jewelry, let me call it like this, was the Holy Spirit. And the king directly found out, this girl is not a Barbie. I mean, this is not Barbie. I always tell the sisters, if you want to make up yourself as Barbie, you get, you get Ken as husband. If you want to have Ken as husband, go. But if you want to have somebody with value, I mean, be a woman of value. And the Bible says God puts together. Blessed be the name. Don't make yourself cheap. Please not. Don't make yourself be. Know who you are. I'm a daughter of God. I'm a son of God. May I'm at home, I'm just a janitor. So while I'm preaching, I'm looking if all the lights are fine, the fire extinctors, everything is, because it's part of my job. But in me, I'm a son of God. No, in me it's different. This is just a tent in which I'm living. But one day I will step out of it and go into my theophany. And you do exactly the same. So the king was so impressed. I mean, we're not going into all these details. But what happens is this, when Haman, when Haman was raised up, remember Haman and Esther, I know I've, uh, omitting all these things because I know you, the story of Esther is well known, but Haman and Esther were both under one roof and they were both blessed under King Ahasuerus. And Brother Branham explains in the church book, there is the two wines and they grow together. And God lets them grow both. God blesses both. But the moment that Haman tries to touch Esther, then the king comes on the plan. So, so, so here we have the plan. Esther becomes an intercessor. I don't mean, Brother Branham didn't save anyone. They're all saved by Calvary. I asked a brother, I said, brother, uh, we, believe, we believe the bride is the final voice for the final age. All these things, we believe all this. But I said, that somebody goes into federal prison, he never was in the message. He wasn't ever, never was in a Christian church. So he reads the Bible and is so impressed and he gives his heart to the Lord. He never read the message. He doesn't know Brother Brandon. No, doesn't. Is he saved or not? I said, surely he's saved. Yeah. Yeah. On what basis? On Calvary. Yeah. On Calvary. Yeah. If not, we enter up in a sect, in a cult. You have to have so much mercy to be saved. I mean, if you, if you start by this, you are back in the Mormon church. God help us. Okay. So, 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 so we are intercessors, but not in that thing as, that, as, as, as if we, we can make a connection to God, but we help. We go for our brother. We go for our sister. We are in the plan of God. Have you ever thought about this? He was in a finish, nearly. But I, I have no, no notes. I'm just reading what I'm reading from, from, from Wikipedia. But you see, have I ever, ever thought about this? Here is Jesus coming to Mary and Martha. And Martha, she was running to Jesus and said, If you would have been here, Lazarus would not have, would not have been, uh, not died. Okay? So she knows, she stops mourning because she knows Jesus is here. 
at the same time, Maria was still mourning because she doesn't know that Jesus is here. So Martha goes to Maria and says, the master calls you. That's the story. Now, who makes the calling? Jesus. But who is the voice? Martha. You understand? Jesus calls today, but who is his voice? Who are his hands? Who are his feet? You. It's the voice of God. You are the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Therefore, every father is the head of his own home. Every pastor is the head of his church. Every messenger is the head of a church age. And Christ is the head of all seven messengers. Therefore, there will be another people who, who will be the final voice for the final age under their messenger. Yes, that's what it is. Not with their own message. Under their messenger. So what happens? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Haman wants to kill uh, uh, the Jews. And here's the plan. She becomes an intercessor. She's now before the throne. And, 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 and he, she, she is timely there. That's what Mordecai says. Now, is, is it not right, the right time that you came into this position? And remember, your life is a blessing to somebody who Brother Paul or me cannot reach. You have a ministry. Your life is the ministry. Sometimes I think, uh, 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 I see many things. But Brother Abraham said, you mothers, you are the fifth gospel. It's an honor to take care of the children. You don't have to go in another country to say, I'm a missionary. You are a missionary in your own home. And God honors this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you see, hey, he, he, she invites Haman the next time. And the king is still in love. It's not just sexual love, no. He loves that character. You can read the story of, the, of Esther. The king doesn't even touch the girl because she said the king didn't touch me for 30 days. It was not, she was not Barbie. This was different. This was different. I mean, for, he, for him, I mean, she had a lot of value. Okay. So the, she invites him for the first time and the king leaves the throne and comes into the house of, in the female palace. And huh, the king says, half of my kingdom will be for you, Esther. Amen. And Esther says, if you would come tomorrow again. And I wondered myself, I said, Esther, why didn't you now react? It's not possible. Now here's the situation. Hang him up and do, do something with Haman. But God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't. Because the next day he came again, the king was Haman. And the Bible said, and in the night, the king couldn't sleep. In that night, the king couldn't sleep. And the book was brought unto him. And the book was opened. Do you see between the first and the coming, second coming of Christ, there's a book to be opened. And here are the names right in. And our names are right in it. Brother Rand said, what a happy day for John when his seals were open and he saw himself. Or saw his name, however you want to bring it. And he said, there is John. I saw my name right in the book. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the king was so thrilled about the Jews and about Mordecai. So when Esther said, I mean, Mordecai wants, uh, 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 Haman wants to kill us. The king was 100%. That was nitro and glycerin coming together. God doesn't make mistakes. Can you say amen? So the family of God. Brother and sister, this message that we believe is Red Bull. It's Red Bull. If you need energy for your life, this message... It's Red Bull. It's different. It's more than just, I go to church. I mean, um, this message is our Father talking to us. You find yourself, hey, I'm Ruth. You find yourself, I'm Esther. That's me. That was my story. Do you, do you see how Esther, from a little girl, from a hillbilly, a hillbilly girl, now came into the position of a queen? Do you understand that God is not bringing us now always to a new birth? That's fine for youngsters. But God is now molding us. To take over the throne. So God sends problems and things. And, and he wants to see our reaction. We ask for an easy life. God calls for troubles. Because he says, I want that character to be built in you. Can you say amen? God brings problems. Even problematic brothers. We want to shoot them on the moon. God says, I send them again. Because he wants us to grow with all these problems. 
Because one day, that rapture, will, we don't believe in the rapture in, in some kind of a uh, denominational way. The rapture will be just one step for us. We are already in the, Brother Raymond calls it raptured condition. This is already the preparation for everything. We are in the cycle already. Can you say amen? amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. What a father we have. Um, if the musicians said fine, if the musicians would come, Brother Paul, he said okay. Amen. If they would call, come and let me finish by this. Amen. Put everything aside. Hallelujah. Amen. What a father we have. Amen. Brother, for me, to preach the message is a great honor. Amen. To live the message is a great honor. To be part of that movement, I'm not ashamed of my father. We know in the framework of this message, there's a lot of childish things. We know this. There's a lot of scandals. There's nothing wrong about it. Look the first Exodus and you will see the parallel in the third. But you have to see the core of that whole thing. Amen. Maybe you have the song, I Have a Father. Amen. And we, and we sing it because this is... Brother Marcus, what is, what is your doctrine? Amen. As for me and my house, we serve the Lord. Amen. That is my doctrine. Amen. There was a brother between Esther and that king. There was a true love. Love is not a feeling. Love is more than butterflies. Love is his substance. If brothers love one another, you cannot let, let him go. You cannot. You cannot make cold war and say, okay, let him, let him do. No, there's something in you. I can know. Come on. And then Satan comes. Are you responsible for your brother? And you say, yes, I'm responsible for my brother and for my sister. I am. Amen. Because I'm not Cain who told God, I'm, ah, my brother, my, yes, my brother. My, no, no, no. We are family. Do you agree with everything? No, I don't agree. No, not at all. But my brother is my brother. If he wants to listen to me, that's fine. If not, I come back. <laughs> that's the way how God was dealing with us. Brother Brandon, one time, and finishing by this. Really finishing. He speaks about the gallant man of David. I honestly say, I don't say it because I'm here. I believe our brother Paul is one of these gallant soldiers. Gallant man. And Brother Bram preaches in the message, um, there's a man who can turn on the light. He, he speaks about this mighty man about David. Gallant man. Man of valor. Character. Man of uh, caliber. The prophet said, the woman of Sarepta had the same caliber like the prophet Elijah. That's what he says. The same caliber. That's family of God. Brother Branham was our brother. Sometimes people say, Branham said, and Branham said, he said, hey, that's my brother. That's my brother. I have another ministry, but that's my brother. It's part of my family. Therefore, we cried all when we were reading his life story. Germans never cry only in football, only in soccer. Germans only so cry in soccer. But when we were reading the story of brother, we were crying. Because that was our story. That was closer to our family story than our family story in the flesh. And, and these people, there's so much love, David. Love is, is mortar. Love is, 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 is substance between people. Amen. Love is more than just, okay, let him go. And David just said, I would like to have a drink from the well in, Jer in Bethlehem. And here's what Brother Bram said. He said, these men, I mean, they were fighters. They were real fighters. But when it comes to David, they loved the man so much. Brother Bram said this, the least of his, com least of his wishes were command for these men. David didn't say, you, 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 you go, I'm the king here, you, no, no. He just fell and these men said, let's do it for our brother. And for 14 miles, two took the sword and one took the bucket at them. <sighs> Amen. And they came back. And David was so touched by this. Amen. And he poured it out to God. He said, I will not drink this. These men, this is the blood of these men. Do you see how the water becomes blood? Even in the gospel. I mean, the bloody word becomes the word for the age. Amen. This is the blood of this man. And Brother Bram said this. 
and you have to find out that is you. Brother Bram said, these men had a revelation that David will become king one day. You are not interested what the world says about this message. You know what it is. Amen. And when David became king, he remembered these mighty men. And they came into their position, some over cities and some over countries. Brother, when our king will be crowned, we come into our positions who we really are. Brother, it matters to serve the Lord. Sister, it matters to serve the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What a family we are. Nobody preaches you in. Nobody can preach you out. God made the choosing. So let's live a life for the honor and the glory of our Father. Amen. Can you say amen? I have a Father. He calls me His own. He'll never leave me. No, Brother Paul. Where I go. speaking it to us to show us that we keep looking at ourselves in the first birth but you can no longer look at yourself in the first birth it's who you are as a son and daughter of God amen we heard the word tonight that we're family of royalty I just finished on it Sunday the family of royalty and our brother picks it up tonight and uh, you know Jesus didn't talk about Esther Paul didn't talk about it but she sure needed to be brought up in the Bible and there are scriptures like that, even in Paul, when he would deal with certain things, even in church order, he would pull something from the Old Testament that was needed for the day that he lived in. A prophet can do that, you know? So he pulls it forward and brings it. And that's our prophet had to pull forward Esther and bring it out of hiding and bring it out of uh, just a story. Can you say amen? Because we are that Esther tonight. Praise the Lord. Have you enjoyed the word? God bless you. We appreciate the word tonight, Brother Marcus. And it's just wonderful. I appreciate reconnecting with him and hearing his gift tonight. It makes me to know God has certainly blessed us this year in particular of sending some ministers that um, they speak my heart. They speak my heart. I don't know. It's very unique. We want to have Brother Marcus back. And there's two or three others this year. They, they, they speak my heart. The same kindred same thing as when i heard brother branham it's he's speaking my heart 
My wife says that when we begin to fellowship with one another, she said, when, he, when I talk, when I talk about my life and my vision and my heart, as soon as we got together, she said, all I knew was he, he was speaking my heart. And when we hear from the Lord, we can say, he's speaking what my heart really feels. And we're, amen. We're, that's the bride. Can you say amen? Not everybody feels that. Not everybody makes that connection. But the bride says, there's my husband speaking right now. Amen. But there's been a lot of ministers. And we, we heard tonight uh, a German, a German, but a transformed German. And that's, that's good. We see a, a change, a transformation by the power of God. We don't want to hear Americans. We don't want to hear Germans. Oh, my. Some of us are Americans. So we can be worse. We want to hear transformed Americans, transformed Germans. Father, thank you for this word tonight, Lord. We feel very grateful each time we gather together that you speak so intimately to us, Lord. We felt your presence here tonight. Thank you for those who've listened in the internet, those families here sacrificing to come, their children, they got school tomorrow and different things. They just make the priority to set their family, even tonight families, set them around. Let them listen to the word of God. I thank you for that, Lord. And we just pray you bless Brother Marcus, his ministry around the world, everywhere he goes, be with him. Anoint him, Lord. And let, may he bless many more congregations as he goes. We send him with a blessing, Lord. Thank you for your word. And we just close this service now. And thank you for what you spoke to us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask him. Amen. Amen. God bless.